Hello, everyone. My name is Ian, and I work for the Central Park Conservancy. Welcome to Central Park. The Central Park Conservancy is the nonprofit that takes care of Central Park year round. Because getting to Central Park is not an option for so many uh, right now, we here at the Conservancy want to bring the park to you. Join us every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. for a virtual lunchtime stroll. Uh, today we'll be walking through the East Meadow in the northeastern section of the park. We'll be together for about 15 minutes or so, and all of the photos you'll see were taken by me uh, just this past Wednesday. Before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, feel free to use the chat feature um, if you want to share anything during the walk. Um, you can find that on the Zoom control bar. You can also use the Q&A feature um, to ask any questions you might have. Uh, my colleagues Juan and Jose are on the back end to answer any of those questions. And I'll also invite you to participate in some polls during the walk. They'll just pop up on your screen and then you can um, answer them and I'll share the results. All right, so that's everything. Without further ado, let's jump right in. As usual, I like to, um, let me just move my face here. Um, as usual, I like to start with a map of the park just to orient you um, for where we're gonna be today. I, as you can see, I flipped the map of the park on its side. Um, the North Meadow is in the, um, or sorry, the East Meadow is in the Northeastern section of the park. You can see where we're gonna be, it's outlined by this blue rectangle here. So I'll zoom in just a bit so we can get a little more detail about where we're gonna be. We are represented by this little figure here on East 102nd Street. That's where we'll start, we'll walk south and we'll kind of loop around East Meadow. And you might be looking at the map and thinking, okay, there's not a lot going on here. There's a playground and there's the East Meadow, but that's about it. Um, and you might think this is one of the more nondescript areas of the park or less interesting places to visit. You know, there are other parts of the park with great works of architecture or more specific attractions. But what I really like about sections like this is that it's just a really nice, well-kept um, green space. So for me, when I come use the park and just, if I'm coming just to relax and get away from the city, this is one of the top places I, I would visit. Um, so yeah, take a good look at the map because we're gonna jump in right now to East 102nd Street. Here we are on Fifth Avenue. You'll notice um, on the street sign here, it says Museum Mile. There are a bunch of great cultural institutions up in this section of the city, like the Met, um, the Guggenheim, the Jewish Museum, and a bunch of other ones. So that's another good reason to come um, and visit uh, this area. And if you're not from New York, this is what the street looks like. And if you've been in New York uh, the past week, you'll know that it's about 90 degrees and 100% humid. So the street is beautiful, but we want to get into the park ASAP. We'll see these cars here. These are, um, once again, on East 102nd Street. It's mostly Parks Department and Central Park Conservancy employees. But we're coming to the park to get away from um, cars. So we'll take the stairs over here on the left. Here we go, I love how inviting this looks. It just makes you wanna climb up the stairs and see what's over the hill. So we'll go up um, these stairs and you can just see how lush it is. Um, and I just love how you're immediately transported out of the city. And you see these beautiful orange flowers on the side, which I actually don't know what they are, but if you um, do know, you can please share in the chat. And look how lush this is. There are shrubs and a lot of ground cover in this area. Um, and some great trees providing shade. So it immediately feels like 10 degrees cooler when you walk into the park. And I thought this photo I took was spectacular. Once again, I took these all last week. Um, and I mentioned this kind of being a nondescript area of the park, but look at this. Uh, it's not a named location that you'd find on the map, but just by walking around and exploring the 843 acres that make up Central Park, it's a really huge space. You'll find some spaces that feel like you'll, your own. Um, and that's what I really like. And you see this big boulder sticking out of the ground. You've probably seen them on all of our weekly walks if you've joined us. Um, that's the Manhattan mica schist. Um, and it, yeah, it creates a really dramatic effect. And I, you can see the trees practically growing out of the rock, which is um, very impressive. 
at the end of this path here, we'll bump into this playground. This is Robert Bentheim playground. This is one that was restored in 1996. Um, it's uh, to make it more accessible. So it's a nice playground to come and visit. And it's right across the street from Mount Sinai Hospital actually. So I believe um, the late philanthropist Robert Bentheim was also um, on the board of the hospital there and it's right across the street. So it's appropriate. And finally, we are at the East Meadow, the namesake for this walk. Um, another awesome picture, I think. It's just this huge, um, expansive green space. Um, it's just a, a wonderful place to come sit and enjoy the park. Um, it's surrounded by trees on all sides and you can even see um, some skyscrapers in the distance. That's about two miles away, but I love the, the vista it creates. And meadows were an important part of Central Park's design. Um, Frederick Law Olmsted, one of the designers of the park, um, called these areas the pastoral landscapes. Um, and he thought they were places, he envisioned these places as um, areas to come have kind of what he called passive recreation. Or um, I, I kind of interpret that as quiet, relaxing places um, to come get away from the city. Although today you can, you know, play some some toss a frisbee on here and make it maybe a bit more active. So it looks great. However, it did not always look like this. This is a common theme for our weekly walks. We'll take you back just a decade. This is from 2010. Um, and you can see it looked a lot different, a lot, uh, not, not as well kept. And it was something of a dust bowl. So the Conservancy restored this um, in 2011, actually. So we installed a new irrigation system and drainage. Um, system, planted more trees, and today um, it just looks great. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. Even just 10 years ago, the park looked a lot different. I think it really is at its best state uh, right now. If we go back even further, I'm talking like 150 years ago further, um, we'll see that this area was supposed to look even different. In the original designs for Central Park, um, it was this area was supposed to be an arboretum or a place to um, show off some of the great trees from North America. Different shrubs and trees would be planted here. And you can see that instead of one big open field, it would have been sort of like um, something like a forest that you'd walk through. You know, I took this from the original um, plans for Central Park. I believe the circles with numbers in them correspond to different tree species that were supposed to be planted here. Um, that never happened, but I think today's area does um, sort of take the spirit of this as a place to appreciate nature, and it's a bit more modern, and that, you know, it's a big lawn for a lot of people to use. And now this area here on the East Meadow is actually closed for restoration right now, and that's because this was the location of a field hospital. You may have seen it in the news um, because of the COVID crisis. There was um, um, extra hospital beds in the park. Um, and changing gears a bit now, I, you know, I just mentioned um, Meadows, East Meadow, but there's a few other Meadows in the park. Um, so I wanted to launch a poll and ask to see where everyone's been. There's a Sheep Meadow and North Meadow as well. So there's three main meadows in the park. So please, you can vote on the screen and I'll share the results once everyone's voted. Um, maybe you've been to none of them either and that's okay. I uh, just wanted to get a sense. All right, so moving on here, you can see we walk south, we're at the north of East Meadow right now. And I mentioned it was intended to be an arboretum. And although it's not explicitly that now, there's still some awesome trees around. And I'll share a couple with you. This is one of my favorites. This is a London plane tree. It's one of the most common trees you'll see in New York City. And you can get a sense of the scale of this one. You'll see this man sitting on the bench here. Huge, huge tree, 50 to 80 feet wide. So they're they're big and they're pretty distinct too. I took a photo close up of its bark and you can see it almost looks like camouflage. That's how I describe it. Easy to identify, so this is a good one to remember. Um, once again, that's the London plane tree. Let's see the results of the poll here. Um, wow, most of uh, the plurality of you have been to all three of them. That's awesome. So I hope this brings up good memories for you if you've been here before. And if you haven't seen any of these, um, I hope you enjoyed this. And maybe this was a, a place you'll visit in the future. 
I'll end the poll now, we'll keep moving. Another awesome tree. This photo is just amazing. I think I love looking at the trees against the, uh, the sky here. This is called an Austrian pine. So it is one of the uh, most common pine trees we have in the park. And it's sort of just draped over the path here. Um, and yeah, you get to see great architecture from the park as well. This is Mount Sinai Hospital. So this is on Fifth Avenue. You can see it to the east here. This is called the Annenberg Building. If you've seen this and you don't know what it's called. Um, Mount Sinai Hospital is actually one of the largest and oldest teaching hospitals in the entire United States. So um, yeah, I mentioned the museums before. I always think it's, it's cool how many important institutions surround Central Park. Um, it just kind of adds to, uh, I don't know, the feel of being in the park. There's a lot of cool stuff you can step out and see um, right nearby. And now you can see it shrouded by some more trees here. I love when I'm going on a stroll through the park just looking at trees. So that's a, a common theme in my walk. And you'll see this is a beech tree and you can see um, these flowers up close. And I'll help you, I taught you how to identify the London plane tree. If you don't know beech trees, um, they're pretty distinct as well. You can see the bark on the left here. It's smooth and gray. It almost looks like the skin of an elephant. And then you can see the leaf on the side. Now we have a couple different types of beech trees in the park. Um, European beech trees and American beech trees are the most common and there's actually a fun trick to differentiate them and you, it involves counting the veins on the leaf that you'll see on the right here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one has eight veins. I can say with good confidence um, that it's a European beech tree. Uh, and there's also a sign right here, so I know for sure it is. Um, but generally, the American beech trees have 13 of these veins, and you can remember the 13 original colonies. It's like 13 or 14, American beech, less than 10, probably a European beech. So that's a fun trick you can try, because there's lots of these trees around the park. Something else I like doing when I'm walking through the park is just looking at the benches. There are these beautiful personalized messages on many of the benches. And you know, I seldom know the context or the story behind them. I'm not sure who this was made for, uh, but I just love knowing that I'm sharing a space, maybe with someone from decades ago that thought this space was special. Um, but it's just another, um, another nice aspect of the park you'll see walking around. And the last great tree I will share with you today is this American elm tree. Probably one of the best trees in the park and maybe even New York City. Uh, it's gigantic. Once again, there's some people in the picture so you can get a scale of how big it is. And it has like 10 different branches that are basically the size of tree trunks that you can see here. Um, it's a massive tree. And actually the Parks Department did make a list of the so-called great trees of New York City. And this was included on it. We actually think this might be older than the park itself. So the park was, um, began construction in 1858. So in 2020, but that would make this uh, more than 160 years old. It's very possible because American elms can live for uh, over 200, maybe even 300 years. So it's a very cool specimen. Um, and as you can probably tell from how I formed this walk, I just love looking, uh, walking around the park and appreciating nature. But uh, there are other ways uh, to use the park, of course. And I have, that's what I'm going to ask you in my second poll if I can get it to work, which I'm having trouble with. Uh, here we go, okay, I figured it out. Okay, here's the second poll. Uh, I included some of the, the top ways that I use the park, um, but maybe there are other ways. So if you don't mind just sharing why you use the park, and we can talk a little bit at the end. Um, once again, it's been like 90 degrees in New York this week. So uh, when I do go to the park, I'm mostly just finding the shadiest spot to sit. Um, and yeah, I'll move on. It's hard to, for me to move from this awesome tree because it's one of the best in the park. Um, but just to give you a sense of where we walked around, really just a small corner of the park, but I wanted to do this one, this walk specifically, because maybe it is a place that people visit less. And I think it's awesome that um, even these kind of more nondescript places are really beautiful. All right, it looks like uh, Meyer Nature is the most popular one, and that's definitely what I like as well, because there are so many awesome trees. 
trees and flowers. We have some great gardens in the park as well to check out. Um, recreation, peace and quiet is a great one and some others. So you can, if you have other, please share it in the chat. I'm interested to hear what other is. Um, but yeah, I think as you can see from this walk, um, there's just so much great nature in the park. So if you haven't been here, you should come. And I included this slide just so you can see, um, you know, when you're entering a meadow like East Meadow, just check out the signs before you go on, just so you know you're following the rules and respecting the space. For example, you'll, you'll learn from this sign here that dogs must be leashed at all times. And you'll also see a sign explaining that uh, if there is a red flag on the meadow, uh, that means that the space is closed, usually because there's like heavy rains. Um, and if people were walking on the lawn, it would kind of tear up the grass. So you can imagine it's difficult to maintain a lawn. And it's kind of like a feat of engineering to maintain a lawn that gets millions of visitors a year. So you have to be patient sometimes uh, if it is closed. Um, yes. I'll leave you with one last beautiful image of the East Meadow. Once again, surrounded by trees, just this rolling green space um, that is a great place to come have a picnic or just relax or admire nature like apparently the majority of you enjoy doing. All right. So this was a really short walk, I know, but I hope I highlighted a new space for some of you. I know many of you have been here, so maybe we'll encourage you to revisit if you can. Uh, I wanted to thank you all very much for joining us again on this walk. Um, there are other ways you can stay connected as well. If you'd like to go to centralparknyc.org slash mycentralpark, there's a couple ways you can connect. You can use the hashtag mycentralpark to share stories with us or hear others' stories. You can download some um, cool content, like we have coloring pages, words, scrambles, or Zoom backgrounds that you can use. Um, and uh, you can check out some um, of our other programming on the website as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thank you again for coming. I, I'm going to leave the room open for a few minutes. So if you have more questions or you'd like to add more comments, please ask away and we will do our best to answer them all. Um, thank you once again. And uh, please come back uh, next week. Brendan will be leading a walk of the Great Hill. So from the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe and be well. <laughs>